warm welcome to all the media and press uh, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, thanks for coming over for part of our factory launch of Traub Nutrition at Jet Sherla. So to know more about what Traub Nutrition's plans and what this factory is all about, I have with us here uh, Dr. Saurav Shekhar, who is MD of uh, uh, Managing Director for South Asia for the entire Traub Nutrition, who is over here. He would probably give you a better insight uh, into the various aspects, the plans, and the details about the factory. Without wasting much of time, over to Dr. Star. Uh, just I'll brief about the company, and then if you have uh, any questions or doubt, uh, just ask me in between also, or we'll take the questions at the end. Uh, in Telugu, I'll not be able to answer, so I have asked my colleague Praveen to join in. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask questions. So just giving a brief about Trown Nutrition and who we are. So talking about Make in India, because this is how we are. And that is why we had constructed this company even in pandemic situation. So, uh, message from uh, <coughs> Mr. Martin, who is uh, our chief guest. He's a Dutch uh, ambassador to India. Unfortunately, because of pandemic situation, nobody is traveling. Our internal audience can travel, uh, taking that risk. But we had avoided uh, other guests to come in to make sure that we take utmost precaution and safety uh, for human health. So just a message from him. My name is Martin van der Berg and I'm the Dutch ambassador to India. And it's an honor and a pleasure to be here, although it's only digital. But today we are all going digital. We are all living in very challenging times due to COVID-19. But at the same time, we should learn how to turn challenges into opportunities. As many countries, India faces a huge economic crisis. But at the same time, India is also looking for opportunities. For opportunities and attracting foreign companies. To increase the Indian share in global value chains. Many foreign firms are already very, very long time here in India. And also many Dutch firms have a large footprint in India. But today we are here for Trau Nutrition, an arm of the Netherlands-based Nutrico. It has more than 90 years experience in the fields of animal field and nutrition. Starting their operations from the Netherlands, they have been able to successfully capture the animal feed market globally. Trau Nutrition India had started its operations in the year of 2013 with a single sales representative and now has grown to an impressive 57 member strong team. It's spectacular to see a huge investment of about 20 million euros to set up two animal nutrition and feed manufacturing facilities in India. Trau Nutrition has put a great amount of efforts in fundamental innovative research for feed is forming the basis for improved animal welfare worldwide. And the India has a great potential to become one of the most important dairy producers in the world by improving productivity through breeding and feeding the output can be easily doubled and even tripled, which is the mantra of the current government to double the income of the farmers by 2022. Using innovative and sustainable solutions India can become an important exporter of dairy products for global consumption. India and the Netherlands are natural partners in agriculture, natural partners in dairy. India is the world's largest producer and consumer of milk, and the Netherlands, having 5% of the world dairy trade, therefore is a natural partner for India. And therefore the Dutch dairy sector is looking for collaborations with India. India has a tremendous untapped potential in this sector. And similar to the Netherlands, the Indian agricultural sector is family based. And this makes it easier for us to understand the challenges of Indian farmers. More than 17, 17 million rural households are engaged in milk production. After having a global health crisis like COVID-19, it is important that the people of the world consume safe food. Trau Nutrition is committed to the cause of responsible usage of antibiotics and food safety. 
Thus having a manufacturing unit in India can only help in increasing productivity per animal to feed the growing population. The Netherlands has demonstrated that these technologies have attained good production levels. And now the next step is to ensure sustained growth of livestock. Dutch dairy companies are innovative and dynamic in nature. They all have one thing in common. Strive to produce more with less. To contribute to the health of animal and the environment. And to achieve the highest quality product for human consumptions. In the Netherlands we believe in the triple helix model. Industry, government and research institutions working together. This is particularly important for increasing animal productivity and create sustainable solutions to prevent the spread of infestations and diseases in animals. Worldwide changes are happening fast today. I just named climate change, growing demand for quality products and the growing pressure on agricultural land. No worries, the message from Ambassador is very clear. Uh, we had gone through uh, those messages and uh, I'll just pass it on to you uh, for the rest of the, uh, his uh, communication. is mainly that Dutch agriculture and dairy sector plus poultry is quite advanced. They work with government, private uh, partnerships and research institutions to make sure that the productivity per animal goes up significantly. Right? They catch around 5% of the daily uh, production in the world. But you see the quality uh, what is produced in the Netherlands. So I'll give you one or two examples to just compare the benchmark between India and Netherlands. So uh, in India, we are the largest producer of the milk in the world. right? But we have the largest number of animals. The productivity per animal is around 4 liters in India compared to Netherlands, which is around 40 liters. So that shows the significant gap into the production capacity and capabilities. The genetics has come from India. So the biggest breed in India is Holstein Frisian for dairy. And Holstein and Frisian Frisian is an area in Netherlands, right? So uh, it has come from there. The genetic potential is at optimum. The next big thing is the environment and nutrition. So nutrition is where we play a very critical role. And this facility, which is for premix and feed additives, will play a very major role in maintaining and increasing the productivity of our animal in India. We have two brands. If you see market facing, there are two brands. One is Strong Nutrition, uh, this facility, uh, which is an animal nutrition division of Nutrico. Then we have Stretting, which is the aqua nutrition division for Nutrico. So Stretting is also based out of, uh, in India, we are based out of Mumbai. And we are putting up a facility nearby to Surat. The place is called Mount Road. This facility will be operational in 2022. Then we have Nutrico New Frontiers. So New Frontiers is a very interesting concept, right? So today, transmission and skating are relevant today. And we know that will be relevant till the human population exists. But we are looking at the new emerging trends globally, something like vegan meat, right? Something like insect proteins, something like land-based salmon. So for these kind of things, which is more futuristic, we have a separate division called New Frontiers and which invests into future. So they had invested into nine companies globally. And in India also, they had invested into a company called Iruvaka, which is Vijayawada based, and an Internet of Things company, which is helping aqua farmers to produce more through a pond management system. Very rich history. So uh, this uh, company was established in 1899, and uh, that was straight in. Then Nutrition came into picture. It is a family owned business established in 1931, so 90 years of rich history and what we had done globally with a consistent quality and productivity that is now being present in India. Uh, we are part of uh, one of the largest family owned businesses in the world and to take you through that, Nutrico was bought by SHV uh, which is I told is a family owned business uh, based out of Netherlands and SHV operates into five different segments. One, the biggest one is energy, then food, which comes with Nutrico. Then you have Mammoths and Eric's, which is heavy lifting and uh, transportation, heavy transportation companies. Then uh, we have Macro, which is a retail company, retail chain, uh, similar to Metro, cash and carry what you have in India. So that we are, then we have two investment companies, which is MPM Capital, which is invest like any other venture capitalist. And then one, they are 
which is an investment company for oil and gas ventures. So established in 1996, started with coal trading in Netherlands, and then uh, the turnover was around 19.2 billion euros in 2019. Currently, we are present in 58 countries through our separate businesses, different businesses, and 55,000 people work for us. Now, Nutrico, uh, as I told, there are two brands, Stretting and uh, Trout. Both the mission is feeding the future. And why this mission is so compelling for all of us who work here, even for all our stakeholders, internal and external, is that the population is growing significantly. And there is tremendous pressure on planet at this point of time. If you see currently, we are utilizing resources of more than one and a half planets. And by 2025, when you add another 1.5 billion headcount, then you need to produce more to feed that kind of population. So we are here to produce the solutions which are more sustainable, more environment friendly, and of very high quality. Because you know that uh, the challenges, if you see, now coming to challenges, what challenges we are facing? Growing middle class, the best thing is that there is a growing middle class which has discretionary income to spend more, and now they are spending more and more of their wallet to food. And during pandemic, if you have seen, people had become even more conscious on spending on quality and safe food. The other challenge is the supplies are struggling. So one example I'll tell you, India was maize that is corn surplus till 2019. And in last quarter of 2019, for the first time we imported corn from Ukraine. That shows that how commodities are so volatile and where the animal industry is competing with the human food chain for raw materials. This is going to be even more dynamic going forward. Then we have definitely other uh, challenges which is into animal welfare. If you go to Andhra Pradesh, which is one of the largest uh, layer belt, the biggest challenge was that government has given an uh, indication and recommendation that cage size should be of minimal this size, right? And the case sizes had increased significantly, which will increase the cost of production. And that was because of the animal welfare, that they want to produce more eggs, but the hen should be into a good environment. The other thing is, we are looking at public health safety concerns now. You must have seen a lot of news on milk adulteration, not very rampant here in South India, but up north, uh, we are facing a big challenge. The second one is aflatoxin content into feed, which impacts our own uh, health. And we are very critical component of entire for, uh, farm to fork. And that's how you see that if all these things you put together, trauma nutrition has the F solutions and efficiencies which can be work as a bridge between all these to produce more meat, milk and egg. Now, Trow company, uh, Trow Nutrition has different operations and this I will not take you much in detail. But that shows that we are into the entire production chain, right? From uh, genetics to animal nutrition to feed, then premixes and feed additives, then processing also. So we are one of the largest feed manufacturers in North America. We are one of the biggest processors and retail uh, chains in Spain. And then uh, we have different companies which is into different species, which is uh, uh, swine, dairy, and poultry. This is specifically for trout nutrition I'm talking about. Now trout, very interesting, right? So uh, trout is pronounced as trout in Dutch, and that means uh, loyal. And why this is so important for us is that we want to remain loyal to our customers, to our stakeholders, to our employees, to make sure that whatsoever we do is mutually beneficial and sustainable. And that is very critical when every company, every other company is talking about customer centricity, being loyal and earn that trust from your partners, right from your vendors to your suppliers to your customers, is going to be very critical if you really want to grow the business into a sustainable way. Now this facility where you are sitting, uh, based out of Hyderabad. Why Hyderabad? The first thing is centrally located. Ease of doing business is definitely significantly high. And we had seen that when we are building our factory, that the government was very cooperative. Uh, TSIC was uh, uh, complementing in each of our steps where we are, where, uh, we are going to seek the help. And uh, that's how we say that this is the ideal place to do business, to be very frank. And the other thing is logistically, we are well connected, centrally located. We have a dry port in Hyderabad, well connected to other ports, which is Chennai and uh, Vishakhapatnam. So, but other than that is that this is the hub of poultry and aqua. So if you see the coastal west, uh, sorry, east coast, 
This is the entire stream production, 80-85% uh, of the stream production happens in this area. Same for poultry, uh, we have a big around 30-35-40% of the broiler pro production happening in this cluster. Then layers, we are more than 60% eggs being produced here. Now, of late we had seen a trend happening in East, Northeast and Bihar. But earlier, a year back, all the eggs were supplied from Andhra. So that is why this was our obvious choice. Uh, we have also a customer service lab in uh, Gachibawali, which is for customers because customers can't send their samples here and they can't walk in to Jetshell every time. So we had built a customer service lab in uh, Jebheri and Glebe so that customers can get uh, benefit of all their feed, uh, milk samples, water samples to get tested and raw materials also. And that is all free of cost at this point of time. It's a more of a customer service uh, which we are building to make sure that they get the best quality in raw materials and finished goods. Now, this is a premix and feed additive facility. Uh, if you will visit uh, any of the premix and feed additive facility, this is a flat structure. But this structure is very different. It's around 45 meters high. The entire area you will get this tower as the maximum one and this has taken us some time to get uh, the approvals because of fire safety and other things. But as we have deployed the entire EU norms and EU fire safety norms, this is best in class in the country. And this technology is very unique because this is a vertically aligned technology which helps us to make the premixes better. Here we uh, produce vitamins and mineral premixes and the blending is very important for us. Till the time it's not being blended, it will not be uniformly distributed into the field. And that will impact the performance of the birds and dairy and uh, aqua also. So uh, one of the largest premix uh, facilities in this part of the world, if I say South Asia, 20,000 metric tons is huge capacity. Right? So uh, that is, and we see that by 2026 20, or 27, we will be able to fill up this capacity and we will look for another expansion. Now some innovation, we are a very innovative company and our values are, uh, I'll just take off the slide is, this is an innovative company, we invest around 50 million euro per year uh, in R&D globally. We have 10 research centers for both 5 for draw and 5 for straighting. But these are all based in Western Hemisphere. But we ensure that all the trials, all the, again, technology which is being uh, developed there, they get validated into subcontinent because the environment is different, climate is different, weather is different, animals are different. So we need to make sure that whatsoever is being developed, it's practically applicable in India. So we do those validation trials with different universities in India and make sure that those solutions are applicable for farmers in India. Right, so uh, for this, this facility is world-class quality, then traceability. Traceability is most important component for any of the premix facility. Because all the raw materials come from different sources. And any of the raw materials, if they go wrong, you will not be able to identify because there are more than 100 raw materials. So we make sure that the material risk assessment is done to our first vendor. So supplier is a middleman. Understand this, right? We go to the origin of the raw material to make sure that if something goes right or wrong, we trace it back and give an answer to our customers. Then definitely it's a completely automated plant. Uh, if you'll go inside the factory when you are, we will be taking you, you'll see that it's a completely automated plant. The product is untouched by hand. So we don't touch, as soon as you start putting the raw materials, after that you don't need to touch, right from uh, packing, pelleting, everything is automated. And then uh, precision weighing, because weighing is also important. Uh, vitamins and minerals, if the weight goes up and down, that will again impact uh, the birds and the animals' performance. And now uh, we have a separate cold storage for vitamins because vitamins denature into a normal room temperature also. Very sensitive raw material. So we have the cold storage here to make sure that raw materials are kept into a safe custody. Barcoding for raw materials to verify that which material comes in and what goes where. Uh, health, safety and environment has been given a very prominent uh, priority for us and if you'll see some of the things which was not mandated as per government of Telangana regulations also we had invested and in, uh, put in here something like water treatment effluent treatment plant so that we discharge positive water to the uh, ground although it's a zero water utilization facility because this is all powder right but we make sure that any discharge happens it's being treated and discharged to the ground then we have water harvesting uh, when we are will be taking it to the tool we'll just show you that so uh, 
very important for us because we believe in sustainability and if you are not sustainable you are not going to do business for long not for your next generations being owned by a family they know that we don't have a pressure from public on uh, listing and giving them the share uh, equity uh, right every quarter so they build the uh, businesses for generations and that is how sustainable in a generation we call it right and we had signed sustainable development goals for united nations which is very quantified now and uh, uh, it's a kpi so every company talks about sustainability but now it's every step is being counted and being taken care of so i'll not take much of your time on this so these are some of the things which we are we measure for this factory's performance which is certified quality and full safety ingredient and supplier assessment as part of traceability monitoring and control risk management and tracking and tracing this is a part of the entire company wide program called new trace right uh, then there are i was talking about the products being produced here so premixes primarily vitamin premixes for all the species so uh, cattle that is dairy poultry aqua and pet food then same for mineral premix for all the species then max care which is a combination it's a like plug and play so you just need to take this uh, material and add to your maize and soya which is around 60% of your uh, feed right so you add that and the feed is ready for the farmers then feed safety uh, and quality so as i talked about that uh, aflatoxin m1 is a big challenge in milk same for poultry also uh, because corn comes from bihar and andhra also because the moisture contents are high if moisture content is high there are chances of developing molds which is fungus so we produce the toxin binder and the feed safety solution here to make sure that we add that into the feed animal feed and it becomes safe for the animal and ultimately for the human consumption so and we believe in growing together so we we expect that our customers our partners whosoever the stakeholders are as we grow they grow and it's a mutually beneficial sustainable relationship with everyone and our mission again feeding the future thanks for listening controlling all the process so it's a batch to batch process one come one batch is assigned for one ton this batch is weighed from the silos and bring down to uh, the weighing hoppers the final weighing hoppers so these are, this is a kind of uh, weighing hopper uh, equipped with load cell which uh, transmits the real time data to the operator just to monitor what is happening into the batch here what we call we have control systems here from one station the operator can look up on all the uh, data from the production machines basically. the final weight confirmation is done whether my batch is completely dosed weighed and ready to mix basically so once it is monitored when it is approved for batch system it falls down into the mixer so the logic behind keeping this tower so tall is we no need to uh, give any active uh, uh, supply uh, sorry transport system to the material it flows by gravity They have special requirements as well, so we need to cater that. And it, it, they also uh, take premixes for their uh, feed manufacturing. So it's going to be a branded uh, kind of uh, package in terms of different units of cages or something like that. So that depends on the requirement of the customer who is purchasing. Like for example, if ABC company is going to brand its premix something, so they will put the expected price. And it's a kind of intermediate. Okay. It's an intermediate. Okay. It's not. Okay. 
<coughs> it's not a finished uh, product. Exactly. We are not directly feeding it to the yeah. animal. Okay. So you are going to supply to the other brands? Yes. The end user brands? The end user brands, yes. So those are feed millers, maybe farmers or maybe such companies who are manufacturing the feed. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Saurabh. Um, I'm the general manager for Tron Nutrition and Nutrico in India and South Asia. Uh, Tron Nutrition, as a uh, uh, gentleman was telling, that uh, Tron Nutrition is basically uh, one of the global leaders in animal nutrition, and we are part of Nutrico. And Nutrico has two divisions. One is Tron Nutrition, which is for animal nutrition, and then we have Scrating, which is for aqua nutrition. So animal nutrition covers all the species, which is uh, poultry, poultry you can say broilers and layers, and then uh, dairy. And then uh, obviously you have aqua, which is shrimps and fish feed, and uh, pet food also. And scratting, if you see, they are manufacturers of uh, feed, which goes to the farmers, and they are into both aqua, freshwater fish, and shrimp feed. And uh, this facility is built in 2020 now, uh, having a capacity of around 20,000 20, metric tons per year. Primarily producing uh, premixes, animal uh, premixes and feed additives, which goes into the animal feed. And then we will have uh, scratching producing the animal feed by 2022, nearby to Surat uh, in Gujarat. And looking forward uh, to expand our footprints in India. So uh, Telangana uh, yeah, is a primarily non-vegetarian state. And uh, contrary to the belief that India is a vegetarian uh, country, it is not. Only five states out of 29 are vegetarian, the rest all are non-vegetarian. If you see, as the middle class population is increasing, and it's not only in Telangana and Hyderabad, across India, uh, the population is f uh, spending more of their wallet on food. And uh, it comes to animal protein, uh, we are primary players. And why you say that uh, broiler meat, eggs, and f meat, uh, sorry, milk, has increased significantly as uh, the population is growing. Then we see that uh, Telangana uh, is a primary producer for broiler, layer, and aqua. Right? Uh, so. Uh, you have big integrators here, uh, you have a big uh, uh, egg producing farms here, uh, both in uh, Andhra and Telangana. So uh, primarily we are targeting those farmers through feed millers. So we don't sell directly to farmers at this point of time. Uh, our main business is B2B and we work closely with integrators and uh, feed millers to supply them the premixes and feed edges, which goes into the feed. But dairy definitely we are expanding our footprints uh, into business to farmer where we'll be selling our products directly to the farmers in a small size pack. Yeah, so this is, a, I'll say this is one of the best in-class facilities uh, globally uh, and especially in South Asia. So this is a, a state-of-the-art facility for premix and feed safety solution production, having a capacity of around 20,000 metric tons per year, which is humongous looking at the Indian market. And uh, again, uh, the base, uh, what we work on and Trout Nutrition globally works on that making sure that the products are produced here are world class and then it is being traceable right so because vitamins and minerals they come from different sources and uh, it is very difficult to trace the source back to the origin if you don't have a proper traceability program which can impact the animal performance at the end of the day so we make sure that this uh, production facility which is world class produces the best in class quality plus our customers can trace it back to the origin so that uh, if anything goes right or wrong they can come back to us and we can make sure that uh, these things are more productive next time uh, for their animals. So uh, market share, definitely we are one of the late entrants in India, to be very frank. There are established players here, um, all multinationals. But yes, globally we are leaders and India also when we are importing prior to this production facility, we had a good market share. Primarily we are focusing currently uh, into poultry and dairy. And regions are definitely uh, that we want to start with south, where we are based, and then we'll expand to north, east, uh, and west, uh, even to Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Bangladesh. So first step will be covering India uh, and across all species, I uh, told earlier also, broilers, layers, uh, uh, dairy, and aqua. And the new segment is pet food, which is significantly growing in India. So that is our plan for next one year, will be to fill up this capacity as soon as possible. So uh, being a family-owned business, I can't uh, divulge the financial figures. But yes, uh, we are growing at around 30-35% CAGR and we'll try to increase that further. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has uh, slowed down the entire industry. But you see that uh, the chicken, egg 
and uh, milk uh, consumption has shown significant improvement in immunity of uh, consumers. So we see that the industry will be growing fast and as the industry grows, uh, we'll take our pie uh, into that growth. Thank you so very much for your time, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank